everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Not Much Ordinary. Welcome from a very wet Staffordshire and from my car. I'm just on the school and waiting to pick my son up. And complete with so much makeup and messy hair. And I thought I'd make a quick video because I've had some appointments today. Not really NMO related. And what to do with the pregnancy. So I thought I'd do a video about NMO and pregnancy so i've just said i'm on school run so i already have a son and we're having a daughter in april me and my husband that is and i'm very excited so when i was diagnosed with nmo it was well hold on nearly two years after i'd had our son however i first had symptoms when he was approximately eight months old and I had optic neuritis, neuritis, optic neuritis. Anyway, I lost my sight for three to four weeks, I think. And it came back gradually and it went gradually. At the time, I was told it was um, a migraine. I was told I was imagining it. I was told it was hysterical blindness. Seriously, and that was in 2013, not 1813. Um... Yeah, and it was missed. So, they have said maybe pregnancy was a trigger, but also I was under a lot of stress at the time, so that could have been a trigger too. I have underactive thyroid, and they said that might have contributed as well. That's why we have wonderful doctors here in the UK and in the States and other parts of the world, I'm sure. So, this time around, it's been a bit different. So, we wanted to have another child my husband and I, for some time, we always said we'd wait until, if we had more than one, we'd wait until the first one was at school, ideally, because of childcare costs and having time for yourself and the baby or babies, um, just to take the pressure off slightly, that was what was right for us. So we just decided that's what we wanted to do, and then I relapsed in 2018. So that was then put on hold. People walking past my car. Hello, people walking past my car. That was then put on hold. So then when I got more stable, I spoke to my doctors at the Walton Centre in Liverpool and said, you know, we want a family in the future. And I was told just to wait a bit longer. So then it got to the summer of 2019. And we got the all clear to try for children. And my husband and I thought it'd take ages. No, it really didn't. It was really quick and we'd gone through the whole you know what medication is safe in pregnancy i am on azathioprine which is an immune suppressant because i have a mog antibody so i'm mog positive i don't have aquaporin 4 and when i before i relapsed i was on mycophenolate now mycophenolate is not safe in a pregnancy because it can cause birth defects so that was another reason we put off trying for children because some people have said oh you've left it a long time i'm like yeah but you don't know me you don't know my health condition friends and family obviously are completely aware but you know like random people people at work not my colleagues but customers or people you know maybe sort of members of the public oh you, oh you've got a little one how old he or seven oh big age gap well yeah guess what there's 10 years between me and my sister and there's 10 years between one of my friends and her sister and it never did us any harm and i'm like yeah because that was right for us so number one um, always consult your specialist i mean they did say that you know if i had got pregnant that would have been okay too because azathioprine is safe in pregnancy and birth um which is great according to them that's all safe and there are all the treatments i think all the people that are on rituximab i think i've never had that i've never had to so there are all the different things obviously your specialist will advise what's right for you i'm just on azathioprine because my phone didn't suit for various different reasons which you can read about in my blog notmuchordinary.com thank you so much for those of you who do read my blog and have subscribed thank you so much for those who also watch my youtube videos and have subscribed i know you can't subscribe to youtube channels unless you have a youtube account i know that myself <laughs> that's how i subscribe to channels because i have this channel there's lots of people walking past my car you probably think i'm facetiming somebody but i'm not um what else? I've had loads more checks this time. So in the UK, we have the wonderful NHS. 
pardon me so i have a midwife and i have a consultant who i think if you're in the states you call them an obgyn i can't remember the full title it's like a, a mid a midwifery gynecology consultant so i have that as well which is where i've been today and i've been under the care of the anaesthetist as well so i'm not paralyzed anymore which is wonderful but I have lasting damage on my spinal cord. So what they're looking at is kind of pain relief. And what I can do, they've recommended maybe a water birth if I want to, which I would love. And they've sort of talked about what pain relief I could have. And I said, well, gas and air season would be fine with my son. I had the alternative to pethidin right between, towards the end, and I can't remember what it was. I don't want an epidural, ideally, because I don't want to feel my legs go numb again after having it happen twice, which they're fully aware of, equals the NMO. But, you know, if I have to, I will. Equally, I said I want a natural birth, not a C-section, a cesarean section, unless I have to, just because personally... I would prefer to have a natural birth, but I've made it very clear that my specialists are happy for me to have an e epidural and a C-section and a natural birth, so everyone's kind of on board. The biggest thing i found is I've been really tired, but I remember being like that with my son. I work part-time, I work three days a week, and I have said to a few people sometimes that I don't think I would have managed as well if I were full time, for example. So that's helped, and I've got like three weeks left um, at work, which is very exciting. It's gone very fast, and I am having my checkup with my NMO consultants at the Walton Centre in about three weeks. So in March, they're always there at the end of the phone. I can contact them, and my GPs and my midwives and the consultants hospital have been brilliant so for me being pregnant with NMO hasn't really changed anything in fact I felt more well which a lot of people have found however I have just increased my thyroid medication and um, I've also just found out I'm borderline anemic or slightly anemic dry skin so i'm starting iron tablets which i've had before um mainly because i have loads and loads of blood tests because of the azathioprine for liver function and full blood count so i'm just keeping an eye on the time and there's people queuing at the gate to collect their children so i'll have to go in a minute um but yeah so the main thing is kind of don't panic keep in touch with your specialists follow their advice this is my personal experience but there's a lot of scary stuff out there about animal being pregnant so Keep an open mind, keep people in the loop. Take care and thank you for watching. Bye.